Parker and the Meltdown Comics from Hollywood, California. Harmontown is now in session. Tonight, the role of Spencer Crittenden will be played by Erin McGathy. And the role of mayor will be played by Dan Harmon. Thank you. Thank you very much. There's some uh, some points of order uh, to be made. Uh, now, here's one of them. Uh, to our friends at MeUndies. I, I was like, <laughs> Who are not, I don't believe they're not paying for any advertising tonight, but I want to address them. Uh, I have a problem at my home with my underwear, which is the following. I have, a, I have two dogs, adopted by Ms. McGathy and myself. Uh, uh, the two dogs are now in my charge. Uh, and the smaller of them, Nigel... Uh, eats he eats the underwear. He eats the, and I want I so I keep I I'm asking MeUndies if I can have another box of MeUndies because I've gotten two shipments from them and I now I still own two pair of underwear ha- that are functional. However, and I just want to I just want to uh, so that you understand that I'm the victim here. Like, like Dan, Dan, please uh, figure out how to throw your underwear. Or, uh, you know, put it in a hamper or something. Don't leave it on the floor. Your dog loves you. He loves. He wants to eat your uh, piss and your shit. This, the, and that's true. Yes, you're right. I'm trying. I'm trying to learn. I don't enjoy not having underwear. But I just want you to. I just want to create a map of the cosmos for you and understand. That you should feel sorry for me because here's the thing. Uh, uh, this little fucker eats. He eats. He didn't do this when you were around. He started eating all the furniture when Aaron and I started divorcing. Adds up. <laughs> Ad, adds up. I'm just trying to. I, I don't know if I should do an impression of Spencer, or I'm just trying to be scared. <laughs> I, yeah. I for one would. I for one would like to hear you try. Okay. Yeah. That happens. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that dog, that dog eats all that underwear. Yeah, that dog. Maybe. That dog really does that. Maybe Dang. you shouldn't leave it on the floor. Uh, so, so this little, this little <laughs> fucker, he eats perfect, he eats the fabric that was touching where my penis <laughs> and asshole are. Because he loves, he's a dog. He thinks that's that's my wallet. He that's, thinks that's my. He thinks that's he thinks that's a locket or. In, I don't in, know what in, in dog terms, they call that flavor country. Uh, yeah, yeah. You notice they sniff your crotch, they sniff yeah. your butt. They're they're going like, oh, hello, uh, Carl. Uh, I see you're allergic to coffee or something. You know, like they're thinking. All right, so so, so he eats, but he eats perfect. Perfect holes, right where the junk and the trunk are. <laughs> and so here's the thing, just so you understand that Wait, I'm, two, I'm a victim. Two separate holes or one? Two separate holes. <laughs> he, he, it's a junk hole and a trunk hole. Yes. It's, it just sounds like he wants you to explore a new fetish. <laughs> Try not to get ahead of me here. <laughs> so here is the part where you say, Dan, I feel bad for you. It's not out of property loss. Which I'm asking me undies to, t- maybe they could reimburse. I don't know if the reimburse is the right word. Re up, uh, bail out. It's a bailout. Uh, and you don't need to go. Yeah, I, I got a variety pack last time. Let's 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 target the boxer briefy more things. Like the the bikini style ones are only good for an Instagram now and then. Um, what, what, what are you what are you rocking right now? Uh, I don't. Uh, probably a good old-fashioned cotton pair of of Calvin Klein's that are one third uh, the softness of Modal, 
as as. Uh, are, are you saying that meandies are too delicious for, for dogs? Well, he never ate the crotch out of my. Now I don't want to start that business. I don't want to. I don't. I don't want. I don't want to. I don't want to be one of those people. Who, like when the iPhone came out, people are like, "Did you know the screen gets degraded faster when you eat pizza?" I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not an alarmist. I'm a futurist, and I'm a and I'm an uh, underwear softness advocate. I wouldn't even even if I thought that was the case, I would I would pull back on that information. I'd be like a tobacco company. I'd be like, well, come on, let's get all the data. Here's the thing. So my soon to be thrown over a historical wall housekeeper, uh, who is terrified right now. Wait. Do, do, don't you and I have the same housekeeper? What's that? Yeah, we have the same housekeeper. Is she? Uh, is she documented? I, I don't. I'm not gonna fucking ask. Yeah. Well. So, so she's, she's coming to my place tomorrow. So so plan for the worst, hope for the best. Yeah. Like I I I I'm you, gonna, you, you're not gonna sell her out, are you? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna. You just you just threatened to throw her over a historical wall. I said soon to be. I didn't say soon to be by me. I'm not building was, a fucking wall. It, it wasn't my platform. I'm no. not a sociopath. I'm not a I'm not a fucking kleptocratic fucking like pathological monster man. The, I, I, I'm, I'm was, a monster man. I didn't I didn't I didn't run for the dumbest job in the world after failing at nine slightly worse ones. Well, being like, born into a trust fund. So, and, and the show that started with you complaining about how your free underwear gets eaten by your, your rescue dog. We also just bonded over that we have we have the same possibly non documented housekeeper. Right. Yes. And yet, well, you notice I'm not like yeah, I'm not going like what about my housekeeper? I'm just saying she's part of this story. <laughs> now imagine what she's going through. Right. Just Wait, well, is, she came to my place one time after coming from your place. To clean my place after cleaning your place, and she looked really, really shagged out. She looked really tired. That, that had go, to be when Aaron was living. With yeah, me. yeah, 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 yeah. You, you guys were together back then, but that's not the, that's not the point. Uh, she's like, oh, "Thank uh, Jeff, thank you for letting me in." I go, "How you doing, Sophia?" And she's like, oh, I'm, so, "I'm so tired. I'm so tired." I go, "Why?" And she goes, "You know Harvey? This is your golden doodle." I go, yeah, I know Harvey. He goes, and she she just like puts her backpack down in my kitchen and she starts to like get like like start washing the dishes. And she goes, Harvey, he he eat all the trash. <laughs> he eat all the trash. But that, I mean, that Harvey would do that once in a while. But very intelligent dog. Um, <laughs> What? He learned. He learned. He picks up. He's a very empathic dog, Harvey. Yeah. Ha- Nigel is a fucking disaster. <laughs> N- Nigel is just like, like, look, you talk to parents. They have a favorite kid. They won't admit it. They know that's bad parenting. You're not supposed to do that. They have a favorite kid. They like one kid better than the other kid. That's, well do- that's, that's not well documented. S- Sophia probably is. Uh... <laughs> Let's assume so, and uh, but you be. don't you don't say, but it's we all know it's true. You have a favorite kid, especially if one comes from a breeder and is amazingly intelligent. The combination of two thoroughbred species of a breed of dog that are renowned for their intelligence, and the other is just a mishmash of rescue crap from Echo Park. <laughs> just a just a fucking. But waste. Are, aren't mutts notoriously more savvy, like because because of the the, the broader gene pool? Not, not when that no, that's like applies to like oh let's mix a Sheltie with a with a with a with a Jack Russell so so. Maybe Maybe he'll. Maybe he'll. Uh, Jack Russell's the fucking worst. Don't get too fucking sidetracked, okay? <laughs> like, you're you're supposed to be the, I'm the your... anti-tangent guy. You're supposed to keep me on rails. Oh, that reminds me. I was having an enchilada today. <laughs> so he, and so, I'm fucking it. And I mean, so here's it. the situation. So imagine when I open my underwear drawer. I imagine this every morning. <laughs> And uh, uh, the underwear drawer is basically full, even though I'm like, hey, that's a lot of... and then I pull out, I pull out each pair of underwear, and it's got this hole in the crotch and hole in the butt. So here I am, a man deprived of his property by his his mutt, 
and his housekeeper is folding, neatly washing and folding, because she thinks I'm a fucking sex monster. Wait, wait. I can't, I can't have that conversation with her. Hold up. How many pairs, how many, uh, multiple pairs, not just one? He, 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 to, like, to every fucking pair that's ever touched the floor. From me undies. O- only whole, from me undies? Uh, I think maybe, no, he's got, I think maybe he, I don't, look, I told you I didn't want to get into that. I, I have a lot of questions. I feel like he's got, no, I have, I have cotton underwear that has this treatment done to it. Are you trying to? I do think it's possible that the modal... Which is a, a fabric a th- three times softer than cotton. Let's do a free, let's do a free ad for them right now because we're not even supposed to do an ad for them. Today. I believe we are. I would say I would highly recommend this underwear. Uh, the- I would highly recommend you get a dog from a breeder. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's bigger fish, kids. <laughs> you know, Anne Frank kicked a cat once. It didn't make the book. <laughs> she loved burgers. Yum, 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 yum. Not a villain. She's not a villain. She's a human being. But you're saying that you have a rescue dog that's going around eating the, the penis and butthole out of all of your MeUndies underwear. Yes. And... Then your Guatemalan housekeeper looks at them and thinks that you're probably goes, a bad person. Yeah, well, okay, yeah, she and she, and forgives it and says, "Oh, this is my job. This is my lot in life. I'm, a, I'm a, Sa- Santa likes it naughty." Uh, it, but when when Aaron and I, we could say. <laughs> when Aaron and I were first dating, not even really dating, when we were platonically friends and I was uh, going, well, if I can make it through this platonic friendship, maybe I can sell her on the, on the, on the great stuff. Um, <laughs> We would we, we we would we would party at night and like uh, and I had a I had a mustache. No, I, I, I had, you a had a mustache. It was my mustache when I was uh, for Halloween was Gomez from the uh, Adams family, and then Aaron loved Aaron. You loved wearing my mustache. I did. I did love. I don't think I've ever seen you happier. <laughs> Yeah, Except on your wedding night, which I wasn't there for because we got in a fight and I wasn't at your wedding night. <laughs> but you used to wear my mustache and you were so pleased by that. Uh, yeah, so she would. Sexy oh, and powerful. God. Sorry. Oh, yeah. I felt, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. It's happening again. I'm falling for that great stuff. Um. <laughs> 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 this magic moment. <laughs> The uh, you would spirit gum the mustache to your lip, and it just it wasn't like a yeah. cheese ball thing. It was like it was a, a really good that's mustache. What she liked a, about it. There was a month where we were living in like a like a James Spader '80s independent film, where the three of us would just hang out and drink and play party games, and I would wear the mustache and no pants and just tights. Yeah. <laughs> so and, and, and I used to eat the uh, the pussy and asshole out of all of her tights. <laughs> Uh, the the point of this uh, flashback being that <laughs> Sophia, uh, uh, on on absolutely more than two occasions, uh, because we were we were doing like a lot of all nighters and then pass out and like yeah, and she, I, I wasn't she, working on community. And, and she would find bags of drugs everywhere. And all she always does. She always finds bags of drugs everywhere. That's her. That's <laughs> her, but but when I was when I was first dating Aaron. So uh, very often, more than twice, like because Monday night would be like, wait, like 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 up till four, or maybe pass out up till six, whatever, and then uh, Sophia would come over at eight thirty Tuesday morning. So on more than two occasions, uh, we sleep on your ottoman. We'd in be the asleep room. downstairs on two different sofas, <laughs> and she'd walk in, and the thing she'd see would be two bleary eyed adults realizing someone was coming in, both of them sitting bolt upright, one of them a woman with a mustache. <laughs> And then we'd quietly excuse ourselves and head upstairs and uh, go out for a Bloody Mary. But but and then but then but then the mustache, which would have be quickly r- ripped off and kind of put left on the kitchen uh, bathroom sink, I, I would always then she would neatly uh, uh, clean it and and put it in its case and, and, and put it in a drawer, like 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 it was ne- next to the bed, next, next to, the, to bed. the bed. <laughs> Because she's like, I get it. I, I don't get it, but I get but, that I don't get it. 
Yes, but I'm north of the wall. These are not wildlings. These are uh, these are corrupted folk. These are elitists. They, She's the best. They she, have to go further to. I, I had a broken garbage disposal and a broken microwave oven door, like for like a week. She came in. I woke up one morning. She left. They were. They worked. Well, you better be prepared to fucking hide her and battle to the death. I will battle skinheads. All right, good. Harvey, eat all the trash. I want you all to protect your housekeepers. <laughs> all right, now, Dan. This is war. Dan, do you do you this think is about values? <laughs> do you think? Me Undies is a good underwear company or a, or a worse underwear company than the fact that it's delicious to dogs. Like, like I don't think it's delicious to dogs. It stops spreading that rumor. It, it, I think that my shit and, and gross crotch uh, pheromones are delicious to Nigel, and I think it's possible, I'll go this far and say it's maybe it's possible that whereas when he eats, uh, when he does that with the Hanes or the uh, the shitty, the cotton underwear, yeah. that basically they kind of get torn apart and it's like just shredded and it's unmistakably dog-eaten underwear that the housekeeper throws in the garbage, that Modal, probably what keeps it three times as soft makes is that it, it's ma- very makes it tightly like you have, knit. You, you have a strap-on peg fetish that yeah. you're putting... <laughs> So he's able to, he, he's like, it's like a corn on the cob. He just like <laughs> makes a little circle. He's like a little Yos- Yosemite Sam robbing a pirate ship with a saw. <laughs> uh, Dan, it's been, it's been a year and I've, you know, some memories fade and some memories stick with me. But for some reason, the, the image of your dirty underwear, I know exactly what it looks like. I have so many, <laughs> everything. <laughs> it's such a... Yeah, it looks but delicious. It, <laughs> it's like a candy store in that. Yeah, bedroom. me and Nigel used to fight over it, like like Lady and the Tramp and the spaghetti. Eat. That's so, not fair, if Meundies is listening, I I promise I am not because I I would think that they would have a chart on their wall. They go, how many Meundies have we given him? Is he selling them? Is he being jaded? Is he is he some kind of weird like like guy that would take take product and then he would sell it? And like, no, I'm not one of those people. Uh, uh, you know, like I could name a couple people that are those people, but that wouldn't prove I wasn't. That would just, am, am I, am I just lazy? I, I've never gotten, I, I've done 9,000 MeUndies ads. I don't have any MeUndies. I, I'd never worn them. Oh. A, 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 am I, a, a, am I supposed to call up like, like MeUndies and say, where's my, where's my undies? Who, who do I talk to about this? Just have Levy hook you up, man. <laughs> Because I eat the they probably, I, I eat the penis and butthole out, out of my own undies. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna love these things. <laughs> I promise this you is, that. Where's, the thing is, we're not actually doing an ad right now. No, this we're is, not. This <laughs> is an actual relationship, an actual platonic relationship. Do they that, make it for gals too? Or is it just is it just gentlemen? They sure do. Hey, yeah. <laughs> you and your loved one can wear matching underwear. Even is and, that right? Yeah, that's true. I, where's my undies? I don't have shit. We just we just told you. Levy will hook you up. Well, we, now you have to make the decision right. to move on, or I, I, I'm go- or I, do what America's look, doing look, look, right look, now. Which if, is just... if, I, if I cared so much about it, I would have got on this earlier. But now that I realize that they're that they make dogs want to eat the butthole out of them. They, <laughs> The, Have we the, talked about this thing where it's like I'm trying to rise above? You know, I'm like, okay, what's my job? Have some humor about it. But what's what's normalizing? What's going numb? Well, ignoring this. So okay, I gotta make jokes about this fucking Hitler uh, situation, this Hitleration, uh, this situation with the with the with the with the Bannon Goebbels and the fucking whole thing and the goddamn fucking family of the damned staring into the camera while he ref- he's not even he's not going to do that blank Dan, I'm, I'm sorry who, who are you talking about <sighs> So anyways I I I I'm, yeah, you know I'm not a political person I'm not a, I'm a I'm a humorist I'm a I'm yeah, a you you you're, you're one of the leading satirists of our of our yeah. time I'm like a Jonathan Swift or a you're Will like Rogers a, you're like a Lily Tomlin sometimes yeah. this crosses over into politics if it's au courant but so but i try to keep things light so you make a joke oh hey, knock knock who's there trump's a fucking fascist dictator we're all gonna die we're all gonna die trump's a fascist dictator we're all gonna die we're all gonna die who uh, 
I don't have to answer that question. Your door's been removed from its hinges by... Uh, by oh, my God! By, by... Sophia! Sophia, no! Uh, so... See, you guys came here to see a podcast. You didn't know that you are going to get biting, trenchant political satire like this. No, this is social observation, social media observation. So has anybody been doing, You make the comment, you do the, you do the joke, I go like, oh, knock, knock, is there a joke? Trump says, fuck, fuck, knock. And then somebody, when, the people are, some people are still responding. They go like, uh... Well, I think a fuck nut is somebody who deletes your emails. Thank you very much. Like, like, they're like, I'm like do, do you know how elections work? She's not, she's, she's not going to hang out like Mimi on Drew Carey, like, just to, like, like, she, that's not what happens to the loser in election. She doesn't just, like, sit in the lobby and, and be like, oh, I'm worse. She's fucking gone, and you're going to miss her. Uh, she's... She's in the woods, literally. They, that, was, that was the last sighting of her. I uh, hope she starts making honey or jewelry. <laughs> <laughs> I hope she writes a book and it's just like, oh, I hope the title is uh, I, no, Noted. Or, or, <laughs> or, or just like, or, I, I can take a hint and then the whole book is just like, fucking, yeah. You, you, uh, you, you want to see, uh, uh, see a bitch? Uh, like, you want to... <laughs> You want to not trust somebody? Well, I, I hope I hope it's called Good Luck and it's two hundred pages and it's just like GGG for like twenty pages. Just like Good Luck and the letters get smaller and smaller and smaller. <laughs> and the last picture is just Bill holding acorns. <laughs> holding acorns. This is a question that no one can really answer. I mean, I, I'm assuming that Bill really wanted her to win, but do you think part of him was like, yeah, uh, uh, in your face? In your face? I mean, in I, whose I, face? I, because he's a guy. Because oh. he's a guy. It's like, yeah, fucking not, it's, yeah, not, it's not as easy as it looks, is it? I, 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 I'm going to make the assumption that he, w- he was like, re- that, 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 that the, the ninth time she caught him cheating on her, he was like, yeah, but you know, you could get to be president. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, ask anybody that wrote on Community, it's like the, the phrase, you'll thank me at the Emmys became a running joke. <laughs> Uh, like, oh, no. like by season six, they had caught on. Like you're not gonna, you're not gonna win an Emmy. And at this point, I wouldn't thank you at them. I should not have to bring a toothbrush to work, sir. It's Yahoo. You never close your eyes anymore. Uh, 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 the uh, uh, Rubik's Stephen Merchant. <laughs> Does it, does it, Lucas, will you stand us down for a moment? Just, just. <laughs> Jesus. Is that uh? Can you, can, can you grab a mic? I really and I really mean, can you? It's so far down. Uh, I, I'm, I'm curious. I'm gonna give it some space. To, okay. Uh, I'm cur- I'm curious. I talk to like tall people, like uh, for the listeners. We got a very tall, very handsome, good, Thank good, you. good, 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 good. <laughs> Gentlemen, it's like he's like, like a, a Kiva Schaffer from Lonely Island was like on the Knicks. <laughs> <laughs> so tallness, like you don't uh, like like so. What what is there? And don't be afraid to tell the truth, uh, no matter what it is. I'm like, afraid. but just inside, not it's not the same as you saying you should feel sorry for me or anything like that. Just inside <laughs> your actual emotions. Do you? Do you feel hurt when people just like joke about it at, at all? Like, it's, like it's every every single interaction in my entire life is all that only. So is that is that that is that troublesome? Like like it's kind of like you wish. I don't you know. Could... I don't know if I can. Like every single experience since the time I was like five has been shaped by the fact that I'm tall. So I'm just I guess used to it. Do you ever do you ever <laughs> do you ever play that card in a conversation with black people? Oh, definitely. <laughs> Like in a co- comment yeah. section, and so yeah. he's going, "What? What do you? What, the, the, what, I'm what do you mean? Blue too. lives matter. That's a, that's that's the most offensive thing." And you're like, "Hey, I know what you mean. All right, yeah, yeah." Do you You've feel never com- been on an airplane? Do you feel compelled to distract from your height? Yes, that's why I'm wearing this shirt. I know. That was, that was, <laughs> well, it that might was, be an actual attempt. We might find out that this takes two inches off the optic nerve. 
Like, like, because it's like by some principle we don't know yeah. about that you've researched yeah. you and th- you and three guys in a club in like uh, London. Uh, well, well, it's like since everyone only talks about how tall I am, it's nice to let them talk about something other than right, that. Right, 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 right. Wow. That makes now, sense. Did, did you go through a big like like growth spurt, like a painful? I growth have spurt? always been very tall. I was eleven pounds seven ounces when I was born. What? Yeah, I was six foot in fifth grade. He's, he smoke. was such a tall baby. Uh, <laughs> how he how tall was he? <laughs> he, was, he was such a tall baby that, that he didn't finish being born until his third birthday. <laughs> That's great. It's like a Play-Doh fun factory in this motherfucker <laughs> with this guy. Dan, Lucas, Lucas was such a tall baby. How <laughs> tall? That when he was a when he was an infant, when he went to Disneyland. Families agreed to meet around him if they got separated. They actually do. They actually do that. They absolutely do that. <laughs> he's, he's Lucas was Lucas. such a tall baby. How tall was he? There was still snow on him in the summertime. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas. Lucas was such a tall baby. How tall was I? He's not allowed to go to zoos because the giraffes will be insecure. <laughs> L- Lucas is such a tall baby. How tall was he? To this day, he's still the... He, he was the only... F- he's the... He's the... He's, he was the only... He was the only fetus allowed on roller coasters. <laughs> I'm not allowed on some. Right, yeah. I'm that's what I was gonna say. Like, yeah. I bet you aren't allowed on yeah. a lot of yeah. shit. Yeah, but the, you're allowed. Not the allowed. Harry Potter ride at Universal. They're like, you're too tall. You will get your head cut off. That's fucked up. See, yeah, you Lucas, thought it was all big Lucas joke. Is, look at Dan. Dan, Lucas is so tall <laughs> that his dick has its own dick and it's bigger than your dick. <laughs> it is uh, proportionate. <laughs> Lucas's slam. You can so subtly say, like, no, it's all, it all works together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, what, what, what do you do? Uh, what, what, what's your. Uh, let's stop doing tall jokes for, uh, for, okay. for a few minutes. They uh, use them to change the Liberty Torch. Yeah. <laughs> I was just joking. I was like. <laughs> L- Lucas, uh, do, do you live in LA? Are you a uh, Los Angelino? Uh, I moved here about a year ago. From yes. where? From Oregon. From Oregon. Still, still on his way too. <laughs> were, were, you, were you followed here by your blue ox? Nice. <laughs> you you fucking been. monster. It's a fucking. <laughs> I'm a human being. <laughs> Wait. Well, let's do a segment called Luke. The things. The, what, the things we should know about Lucas. <laughs> other, about, a, se- no. a segment called we, We're Sorry, Lucas. Well. <laughs> It's, well, it's, it's like, okay. Let's make it it's up. okay. <laughs> like now that we, now that he's been gracious about all that, now his reward should be that Thank we you. find out some non-height related things about him. Uh, <laughs> right, well, what band are you in? Um, <laughs> I'm not in a band. I do paint. Um, you don't play stand up bass. <laughs> no. <laughs> I play sit down. No. <laughs> but what do you What do you do? Um, I I paint and I'm an actor at Universal Studios. Oh. Wait, what, what do you do at Universal Studios? I am a character. Now, I, I, I was once, too. What do you do? I, I'm a few different things. So I'm a, I'm a who at Christmas, and I also am the warm-up act for the animal show, if sure. anyone has been there. yeah. I, I, it's I, very I, Harpo Marx. It's like a silent clown type. I do a lot of mime and mess with guests. Now, I, uh, I for a, a summer or two, did uh, I was Harry from Harry and the Hendersons and Frankenstein. That's good, yeah. But you, now, now I, I, this is not a height thing, but you would be... Like you would be too tall to be. I am. I am too tall. The tallest character at the park is Megatron, and height cap is six six. So I'm allowed to be the atmosphere characters, who are just like you're a policeman. You can. I can do that. <laughs> because I, I, I was Harry and the Hendersons in the the, the, the the dead of summer, wearing a yak fur and latex <laughs> mushroom. Oh man, yeah, mushroom. What? I feel. Re- I feel really bad for the people who are Shrek. Ooh. Oh my God! It's... But, like, it, it was the hottest thing. You, you were just pouring sweat, but you, inside the big feet of the big foot of the Sasquatch, there, there was like metal high heels in it. So like I, I'm six four ish. I'm just like a shade under six four. So in that Short. with the head, I was like like, like probably six ten. Like in that, yeah. but I got one day I got to play Frankenstein, which is the best because you just wear a nice suit. Yeah, a nice suit and like platform heels. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, and, and also, nobody fucks with you when you're fighting. Oh, definitely not, yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and, then, and they bone out. They don't someone, want to someone stuck the, a wand in the mummy's butt. <laughs> that seems like an awesome 80s Gary Newman song. Yeah, right? Um, I got I, my what? wand inside. <laughs> inside the mummy's butt. <laughs> I like my wrappings. <laughs> when, I like my stick. When I when when, when I was Harry, uh, Harry Nenison, it was my own eyes that you could see through the mask, and the jaw would work. And you were supposed to be kind of a comical, like lovable yeah, yeah. character. But Animated. You know. it, it was uh, nobody really screwed with you because you're so big, and there's this big latex padded muscle suit. Yeah. Um, and with yak fur, and it's a thousand degrees outside, and you're dying. You're dying. You're dying. Yeah. And you're making ten dollars an hour the, the fucking hard way. Wait, yeah. I think you meant Randy Newman, didn't you? I was doing Gary Newman. Did you mean Randy Newman? Gary Newman. Okay. Because uh, right. someone, someone stuck a, some, someone put a stick in the mummy's butt. Does sound more like a Randy Newman. Well, let, 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 yeah. our, uh, let, let's hear Randy Newman talk about putting a, a wand up the mummy's butt. You got butt. that stick now, don't you, little boy? <laughs> What you gonna do with that stick when you don't know what to do? You I got like... a stick in your butt. <laughs> like that. Yeah. Tall people. Yeah. Y- yeah. Uh, Thank you. But but it, it was the uh, Japanese businessmen would come up, and they so, would yeah. blow smoke into my mask. They could see human beings' eyes in there, and they would like like get in their tippy toes and go. Phew. And then, a couple times, just take their hand and try to ram it up Sasquatch's butt. Mm-hmm. And I would just shove them as hard as I could. And then run off like I was being a bad Sasquatch. I told you, I've told this story before. I was a Captain Crunch. Uh, um, <laughs> d- during, during either, either their... Their peak popularity as a cereal, or or the Valley. I don't know why. What would make them? This was at the uh, short-lived General Mills cereal theme park. The the promotional campaign was who's the real captain. There were multiple captains wandering the city of Milwaukee. So there were another tour, uh, and uh, and one of the other captains. Oh, wait, wait, you're not joking. No, I thought this was a bit. All right, I've told the, I've told this story, but you yeah. you've also you talked about Sean being McKenna. Harry and the Hendersons. So it's recycling night at Harmontown. <laughs> I, I, I was a, a captain, and there was another guy who was a captain, because we were multiple captains. We'd go around going, I'm the real captain. No, I am the real captain. Uh, and we had the big costumes with the, the, the spray-painted mesh mouth where you're looking out of it. Uh, we went to Winterfest, and they put ice skates on us, and they said, why don't you go out there? And, oh, no. And the kids were like, there's six-foot pillows on ice skates. <laughs> Let's attack. My childhood is yeah. incumbent upon me. I, 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 it's my patriotic duty to ram these fuckers into oblivion. <laughs> Throw them down and watch uh, the turtle to try and get up. What did they want to happen? Uh, they, they, they were just like, it was just like, it was, I, I don't, uh, if, if you survived Pearl Harbor, I don't know why you think I'm trivializing your experience, but it was, to me, it was my Pearl Harbor. <laughs> Dan, uh, I, I remember when you told me that story, and I, for some reason I was so impressed. <laughs> but it's that, impressive. Like a, yeah, I was Captain Crunch. Yeah. Yeah, it's fucking impressive. Well, also, you you skated. Oh yeah, I'd say, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like that's hard skating. Skating. Well, hard. when you're in Milwaukee, it's like you you you're sliding everywhere anyway, and so then somebody's <laughs> like, put these blades on, you'll go faster. And like, okay. So, so Lu- Lucas, right now you, you're cr- hey. <laughs> I just gotta finish the story. Oh, I'm sorry. So one of the, the the kids kept bombarding us, and I one of the captains, my friend, he, I saw I was near him, and he grabbed one of the kids, and the mouth is like right in front of the kid's face, and he said, "If you skate into me one more time, I will break your fucking arm, and if you tell anybody I said this, I'll deny it." And I think he was the real captain. That's when I figured it out. I don't know if they ever gave us an answer, but... That, that, might, that might have been Admiral Crunch. <laughs> uh, all right, so anyway, now, continue. So, so you're currently still doing costume work and like, character stuff up at Universal? Yes, currently we're preparing for Grinchmas. Grinchmas. Ah, Grinchmas. Copyright problems there? Can't just... Yeah. 
Christmas is completely taken. No, it's because it's it's we, like, we, we don't want to Trump thing. We don't want to say what happened. We don't want to say Christmas. We don't want to say Hanukkah. So it's it's Grinchmas. Yeah. But we sing Christmas carols. Did they still do the uh, Westworld? Uh, Waterworld. Waterworld. Yes, Waterworld. I know. That's still it's happening. Still there. Yeah, it's, it's good. Waterworld. Waterworld. Very, very beautiful movie. Very successful ride. <laughs> and I'll tell you something. I heard what you just said. You're you're gonna be saying Christmas. They're gonna be saying Christmas. Yeah. They're gonna love it. They're gonna love it. We're gonna go down there. We're gonna make them say Christmas. It, hugely. Uh. So yeah. tall, tall. <laughs> but more to it than that. Ironically, working in a theme park, the height doesn't figure in. The guy playing Megatron and Harry from Harry and the Hendersons, when you walk by wearing an ill-fitting uh, 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 bellhop costume, yeah. they go, "What's with the tall guy?" <laughs> you're, you're too tall to be the tall characters. I'm too tall to be the tall characters. I can be the other atmosphere. Like, I can be a police officer, British palace guard, train conductor, like those ones. Right. But, but, you, but you, you can't put on the Frankenstein. But boots they're like, Shaggy's like, 6'2", and you're like, he's a cartoon. Uh, <laughs> do you have a big dick? I already mentioned this. I said it was proportionate. Okay. I don't want to say things out loud. Okay. Like that. He, sa- he said he has a proportionate... To my height. Yeah. Well, that's... Okay, big dick then. Sure. Because <laughs> my, mine is not proportionate. How not proportionate <laughs> is it? Uh, <laughs> legally, I'm required to call it a nipple. <laughs> Uh, D- Dan's dick is so not proportionate to his size. <laughs> oh, not proportionate is it? There's never snow on it. <laughs> Call back. <laughs> no one ever agrees to meet in front of it if they go. My to dick. My dick is so uh, not proportionate to my size. Oh, oh, not proportionate is it? Is it? Is it? To this day, I still don't know if I'm circumcised. <laughs> Because just the regular amount of skin. <laughs> Still turtlenecks around it and comes to a little bronze swagger. <laughs> now. Dance. <laughs> Go ahead. A- a- Aaron, you-, you might be something of an expert on this topic. A dance dick is so not proportionate to his size. How not not proportionate proportionate is it? I feel uncomfortable joking about it. (laughs) 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 It's beautiful. No, Dan, I love you. It's 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 beautiful. (laughs) How beautiful is it? It's so beautiful that it needs to be beautiful. <laughs> because it's unprepared. I don't know. Sorry, sorry. I just wanted to get in on the on on the boy fun. Yeah, I know. I tell you, like, my my dick is so beautiful. How oh, beautiful, beautiful is it? It's in the background of three Terrence Malick movies. <laughs> uh, Um, Lucas, you said that you're also uh, not, not just an actor, but what else? I also paint. You paint? I, 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 I can, like, what, what sort of painting do you do? Mostly scenes from video games. <laughs> what, what, me, what media? Acrylic on canvas. Really? Mm-hmm. Scenes from... So, what? like pixel paintings? I recently did a painting of Pallet Town from Pokemon, if people play Pokemon. <laughs> um, so I like draw out a grid on the canvas, and then I paint it. By hand with Fantastic. Yeah. He tried doing uh, landscapes like traditional stuff, but the teacher would be like, "That's just a plane." <laughs> I told you. <laughs> I told you look out the window. It, oh. Oh. <laughs> Luke.
it. Why why is it that we think it's okay to what? comment about this and it's the only physical thing you can? Well, if it, no, I was going to say like if a we had we had our friend uh, Colin on here, he's a little person, uh, dwarfism. Uh, like we obviously we don't feel quite as we range in our like oh if they make it okay for us we can ask them questions about about the the la- the latitude and the effect and all the things, but what is it about height that's like because it doesn't really you're not, you can't kill a mammoth any better than anybody else. Definitely not. Well, like, so, but there's something, there must be something where we feel like, oh, you don't, you're, you're, he's fine, he's fine. Like we must be feeling that, or we wouldn't feel okay. Right. Like, like, is it? Are you faster? Are you? Are Definitely you, not. I feel like your your heart's probably like you know it's, dying. Yeah, it's like it's, <laughs> there's probably risk involved. There aren't a lot of tall old people. Really? Because of heart attacks. See? <laughs> See? That, that was sad. Lucas, like, I, I, being, like, just shy of 6'4", I'm at the threshold of I can just fit into most, like, roller coasters. Yeah. I can sit and coach without being miserable. Right. But, but right at the edge of that. So, like, coach for you is probably a bummer, right? It is a bummer. If you get southwest and you board early, you can get the exit row. Yeah, but you have to. Yeah. You got to. W- what about roller coasters? Roller coasters? Yeah. What about roller um, <laughs> I love roller coasters. Uh, <laughs> Uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm wedged into most roller coasters. Oh, yeah. I mean, I just don't go on you them. You don't even do yeah, it. Yeah, I just don't bother. Because it's, like, it's cause like if I wait in line for an hour to get on the coaster, and then they're like, you can't go on. And I'm like, oh, great. And the goddamn nightmare of any theatrical situation at all. Yeah. Even me, I've, I'm aware, you know, I'm six feet. Like, like, like It's like that, that dread of, like, you walk into an already filled auditorium or picnic uh, out, uh, outdoor like thing where people are sitting or something and it's just that those comments like oh yeah. god no yeah i know i apologize to this lovely yeah. gentleman behind me <laughs> i was like i'm and sorry the, but i am and the guy he's pointing to is an african-american gentleman yeah. so and, and 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 how happy are you right now that he's on stage and not sitting in front of you <laughs> 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 yes, I, I have tall guy guilt about going to concerts and stuff like I stand in the back yeah I, I have that guilt but it doesn't hold me back from living my life <laughs> I love it <laughs> I mean you're still uh, you're still a white man oh I know uh, hey, hey Lucas Lucas, if we uh, do, you have like an Instagram or something like that. We can follow your art and like, uh, like we can I, maybe like get I, people to buy some of your. I stuff? guess I do have an Instagram, uh, King Lucas Lee at Instagram. I don't know how to Instagram. King well. Lucas L E E L E E. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, let's, let's check it out. Maybe, maybe maybe we'll get one and like hang it on the wall here for our, our harmony. That'd be lovely. I'll, I'll I'll paint you one for free and bring it next time. All right. I, All right I, your free ride is over. I, He's coming back down. <laughs> let's hear it for Sorry. Lucas, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you can still see me. <laughs> and it's all about this this view. But as I, that is interesting. I don't want to, I don't want to, but Thank that you. is, a, I totally, that didn't even, that was the last thought I had was like, oh yeah, women. Like, 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 like you, like, like it's, it's isn't always, it, it's always the it last always. thing I think of before I, like, oh, house, I know. house keys, women. <laughs> well, like if you, if you're like a six foot seven woman, you're gonna you, you pro, you're experiencing a completely different thing. It's not like tall person, short person. It's like there's an additional layer of like, yeah, of course. Yeah, I, w- I wanted to ask Lucas, and you could nod yes or no, but I was curious if like if, if people because I was thinking about that exact same thing. Like if he was female, women like a very tall woman may worry about whether or not men are fetishizing their tallness. Like they have a crumb fetish. That you told me on one of our first dates. That you you know like you you some you have to wonder whether the 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 like a, a lot of guys ask you out but you're always wondering if they just want to climb you. Yeah, yeah. Like I have, I mean, less so now. Well, I don't know. Like from time to time, I've had a I've had a crumb body, <laughs> like big thighs, and uh, I feel weird describing my body. Um, and you were, I think you were speaking from a place of of tallness. Well, and also that that like uh, I think. You were referring possibly to the phenomenon of like smaller gentlemen men, of a smaller yes, stature yeah. uh, seeming to have a proclivity. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, yes. Which is a weird, which is a weird line across. If you're attracted to somebody and then you're like, well, is it? Am I a fetish for them? Do you, Lucas? Do you experience this? Is this sometimes? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't to, I don't know what to say. You're asking from the perspective of a lady, right? No, no. For for you, like, oh. do you ever do you ever have any? Can you tell when someone's like, oh, this is 
This is a tall chaser. This is a building because, chaser. I don't date much because people don't see me as a person a lot. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh. They're just like, oh, look at that unique thing to look at. Yeah. Oh, oh man. Not after tonight, Lucas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now you're, now you're going to have to worry about whether they're star fuckers. <laughs> And after the election, yeah. I was like, okay, no more lines. I'm not going to celebrate like these demographic lines and stuff. But it is it's still fun to talk about. like the it Because it, it, I, I am convinced, just from peering in my own head and talking to other guys, like we're kind of oblivious to the to that thing of like, I guess unless it's like money, like guys get money, like, oh, they're a gold digger, oh, a gold digger. But like anything else, if a guy, if a woman was like, yeah, I'm only going out with you because your feet are shaped like skis or whatever, the guy would be like, <laughs> all right, great, it paid off. Like, like... <laughs> But I, th- I think, I think, I think, be- yeah, I don't know. There, that, there might be a disparity there. But then I think about, it, I'm like, yeah, probably not. Like, I think you'd evenly dispersed like men and women who would ha- either have a problem with that or not have a problem with that, probably. Yeah, I think as long as it's like consensual and not secret, like that's cool. As long as someone's not hiding their, their deep, I don't know. Yeah. As long as they they don't they like the person as as well. Well, what if somebody was going out with you and they said like, "Oh, I just love how you're." I don't know. They said something really specific physically about you, and it was like something that felt temporary. What if they said, you know, it's like, and isn't that mm-hmm. the thing that's always being people suspect is not being said? Like, like, so, or the the like, uh, oh, I think he might like me. He talks about my how hot my body like is. Like red a lot. hair. Red hair's <laughs> red hair. You can buy in a bottle. You can, it doesn't. It's not. Ter- I'm, t- I'm talking about the terror of like, oh, my boyfriend loves my ass. He loves my. He's always talking about right. my ass. Like, well, yeah. he, like, he's not just talking about its existence. He might be talking about its state of being uh, at that particular time. That must be fucking horrible. Uh, I, 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 I have to find my own shame before I worry about like. My, my my body and that that takes a long time and 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 then I look really bad like I just I'm just like fi- I, I have to like have difficulty breathing in my sleep before I'm like I should lose some weight <laughs> or I'll see myself from 90 degrees like profile in a Facebook live video talking about Trump getting elected and I'll be like so it just looks like a mountain of 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 of, of leaves so <laughs> It's a shambling mound. <laughs> squirrels hiding things in him. Squirrels hiding things. But I don't do anything about it. I got an elliptical in my living room, and it's just literally like sitting there since the day it was assembled, just waiting, just going, what did I do? <laughs> have you ever used it? I literally have not used it. H- how long has it been there? I don't know, man. Steve, how long has it been there? How long has the elliptical been there? What's that? How long has the elliptical been there? How long since you also <laughs> found a uh, laptop uh, uh, holder so I could play Minecraft while I was uh, on the elliptical, thinking I, that might get me on it? I think I bought that before the elliptical. <laughs> yeah. Did it's all set up and ready to go. I bought you a tracksuit. That was part of the you whole deal. Gym- I want to know more about this tracksuit. What color is it? <laughs> Wait, yeah. did Jeff tell you get get up there? Please. No, I did not. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> he, he, he just stormed the stage. He just like, sauntered up going, flavor flame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, <laughs> all right. Well, well, I mean, maybe as a as a as a loving audience, we could all help you get on the elliptical. <laughs> There's a there's a fine line between that and fatty fatty two by four, ch- yeah, you know, like a bunch of people chanting "You need exercise" is like. I, it's not I, I, being I feel inspiring. Like it's after. not about it's not about your weight. It's just like a, it's like a healthy thing to do. You know, it's like I think. You know is it true that, that you can't true. make it through the cellar door? <laughs> <laughs> I got a. I'm gonna. I got the tracksuit was the final thing. I was like, I don't have an outfit. Yeah. Am I supposed to? You gotta the have neighbors an are gonna see me with my dick coming out through my holy underwear and my <laughs> asshole. They're gonna see me in this weird like. Is that Depeche Mode uh, exercising? Is there a? I, 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 when we do raps, when you do kicky baby dance, like that. That's like being on the elliptical. Like I. I I've it's seen certainly you... the exercise I currently get. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, or if well, I tell a story where I'm especially vexed what, by election what? results, I, that after a little, I do this, and then like ten minutes later, you'll be talking. And I'll be like, 
<laughs> why don't why don't s- my body thinks I was swimming? Why don't s- <laughs> Steve and Aaron and Spencer and I like just like start coming up with long like twenty minute the kind of medium tempo rap beats <laughs> where you have to do the kicky baby dance the whole time, uh, and yeah. then. Uh, I think if everyone was just chanting about how adorable you were, you would exercise. If, uh, while, while I was exercising, yeah. If yeah. everybody was like, if I woke up one morning and I was like, where's all the attention? And then I could hear it coming from downstairs. And it was like, it was like a video game where a tutorial where I had to get on the elliptical in order to get the attention. And I'd be like, <laughs> and then like, it started coming in like an incremental clicker game. Like, like that's how I collected cookies. <laughs> It's exercise, exercise time at Harmontown. Yeah. yeah. Just because we want you alive. <laughs> when you wake up in the morning and you need to move, ha ha. Toot toot toot. Take your mama to the basket. Let's take your mama to the fruit. little feet kicking in the air. Everybody's gonna go to the market soon. Saw your mama in the order and I put it on her belly too. I want to fuck your mama's butt. I want to do it in the rut. Don't forget uh, about your adorable elbows. Yeah. A oh, little upper, upper body strength. <laughs> I just smelled his pits. He's not going to do that. Shit came out of his own pits. He hasn't taken a shower in a while. His girlfriend went out of town for a while. He's been playing Deus Ex for a while. That game's pretty hard on the medium difficulty. Beep, beep, stop, stop. Can you feet, baby feet. Now knees up, now knees up. Knees in the air and knees in the air. Now elbows to the side. Now elbows nice and wide. Now knees up once again. Count to ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But dance while you're counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Again. You just burned four calories. <laughs> yeah. All right. It. Oh. You know what, what that song reminds me of is my own mortality. <laughs> 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 We're all gonna die. I will. I will. I will. I will make whatever I just burnt off back by. I'll just lick something back there. <laughs> Like I, I, I have ways of, of, of scrounging for calories that people don't even know about. I find truffles. I just find truffles. It's uh, people don't know that Dan makes most of his money by being a truffle finder. <laughs> <laughs> we just did a joke about Dan exercising. We were like, no, no, I will not say pig. Couldn't ever. Right? Was that the? I, Sorry, I, that, that was you, not me. <laughs> All right. Well, Sorry, that was uh, it. well. That was it. So you, you, you're not going to get divorced twice. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there. There are people, people here that want to present you with this thing that you tangentially. Well, I'll just have them come out. Uh, our friends from from ca- Carrot Top, Carrot, 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 <laughs> carrot Top, from ca- carrot. No, it's, you know, from, our friends right. from Carrot Top, from Carrot. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. What's up, Dan? My name is Anthony, and this is Claire. Uh, we've never met, but we've worked together before. <laughs> we work for a company called uh, Carrot Creative. Uh, does that ring I'm bell? familiar, yeah. You guys do all this great stuff for Adult Swim, like you're wizards of marketing. Wizards of marketing. Put that on my tombstone. So That would be good marketing. Yeah. <laughs> you're very dedicated. Yes. It takes a strong marketer to volunteer his tombstone space. <laughs> I'll just be vaporized into the ground. I'm not going to have the benefit of a tombstone. Anyways. Pass geez. the savings onto a larger tombstone. Yeah, there you go. I'm, gonna, I, I'm not even going to die. I'm just going to get lost like an elf in Middle Earth. Uh, uh, but I'm still, I still want that fucking big-ass tombstone. Yeah, there you go. So the first project we ever did together was something called the Rick and Morty Ricksterverse. Has anybody ever heard of that? 
It's an Instagram account that uh, you can waste a lot of time on. And we actually um, won an award for it uh, from the Cannes Lions, from Cannes, France. It's an international award, so it's not, it's not an Emmy. It's not the Emmy you're getting yet, but we have uh, a Cannes Lion for you. If this is your award. This is uh, for you and Justin and for everybody at uh, Starburns that's working on Rick and Morty really hard. It's Like I said, it's not an Emmy, but it's heavy as hell, and it's made out of real bronze. That, I, you were saying it's like the Academy Awards for advertising, right? Yeah, as lame as that sounds, but it's still a big deal. <laughs> Jesus. So look at that. But why do I get one? I didn't do the commercials. Well, I mean, you had to approve everything. <laughs> you can get an award for approving things? You're a part well, of the team. You, you gave, I remember at Comic-Con a couple years ago, you, we, you gave extensive notes. We had all, I didn't give no extensive notes of that thing. This guy's had it unlocked, man. He's, 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 I don't deserve this. Yeah, I'm yeah, going to give this to, uh, to <laughs> clinically tall people. <laughs> Accept your award with grace. Oh, I'm sorry. I oh, I didn't. Well, yeah. Okay. All right. That was my Wisconsin thing. Yeah, yeah. You shouldn't deflect a compliment, but at the same time, I just want to. Yeah. Thank you so much. That was. This is. This is so nice that you would think of me and give this to me. Thank you. I'm just saying the system is is fucked. Well, yeah. But I mean, it is through you that we can do things like this. Because any any other show creator would be like, no, I don't care about any of this. But like, it was because you guys and because of your passion that we get to keep doing it. We've done. Two different expansions for it. There might be some more coming up. We can't technically say, but sounds like you know, there are there's more stuff coming up. So I mean, there's more. And uh, when is season three coming out? What's going on? Uh, I was going to ask you the same. <laughs> oh shit! It just seems to be taking a while. It's just drawings. I think you can. <laughs> Why do you keep making Facebook posts? Just make season three. Yeah. Yeah, like I'm, t- I'm, yeah, I'm tweeting like, oh yeah, we elected a Nazi. Hey, just shut up, get back to work on season three. I, I, they're drawing it. I don't draw it. <laughs> why, why don't you just start approving things faster, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that is what that is what my approval usually gets in the way. It was a it, it it took stealth approval to finally make me nail it. I should just let people do what they're what they're already doing. <laughs> oh. It's real fun to kiss. I can say that. Uh, it's not a Clio, but oh, it's better than a Clio. It's so much. It, this is international, man. Yeah, yeah. That's like more than one country. Yep. It's like a beautiful, uh, sexy, sleepy lion. What is it yeah. about? Like, like, like. What's your what? You, you, I, I, I talk to a lot of marketing people, and and uh, at the risk of offending uh, any of the ones that have worked with me on anything, like, because <laughs> I don't talk to a lot of good ones. Like, I. I uh, <laughs> Like, 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 you guys are clearly like you're on your shit. Like, like, it, it, uh, you're thinking about this stuff, and it's like, like, what is the, what is the, what do I want to ask here? So I want to, I want to ask a question that the answer can like get through to like young people that want to go into marketing or young people that shouldn't go into marketing who should hear it and go, oh, that's not me. I should be a cowboy. Um, what is it? What is the at its highest art? You know, like, what is the is there something fancy to say about, you know, like the guy in Chariots of Fire goes, uh, when I run, I feel God's pleasure. Uh, so you can't use that. <laughs> what is it about marketing? What is it? I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to ask. Just say something. 9-11. It's not, oh, it's not. Okay. I thought that's what, I thought that was. Uh, it's about 10% 9-11. That's right. Everything is. Let's face it. Uh, but, you know, but like, like, I don't know. You uh, Just kind of take over for me. Do good. I mean, it's. <laughs> This is kind of a hard question to answer for this specific thing. What, because... what Dan's asking you guys is to market marketing. Yeah. yeah so sell sell us on being in marketing. you got to think outside the box. <laughs> I mean, well, something like this, it's hard for me to, to even say it because it's for something so specific like Rick and Morty that ev- we were all passionate about and huge fans of before we were even like twinkles in Adult Swim's eye. You know what I mean? I was such a, just a huge fan of everything. And just, you know, I remember my buddy of mine running into my dorm room and talking about, you got to see this thing. And it was Heat Vision and Jack and like all this other yeah. Channel 101 stuff. So it's just, the fact that I'm able to work on something that, um, that I love so much, it, that's part of it. So you're what not going to your... always be able to get to work on something that you love. Like I right. had to work on a lot of like Facebook ads for credit cards to get to Rick and Morty. So I guess what I could say is like, one, part of it is giving a shit. 
And then part of it is like working your way towards you to you can get to something that you just love and you're able to work on it because you're not going to get it right away. You're not, you might not get it for a long time. It took me a long time. Unlike Claire, who we hired just for the Ricks first, so this was her, her first job out of school. I'm a brat, sorry. Claire, was it your pitch or did you pitch using Instagram that way? That very oh, 100%. Way? It was on me. <laughs> no, it, it was like 10,000% a team effort. And I actually... At the very beginning, uh, wasn't even brought on until like halfway through production when we realized like, oh shit, we still have a lot to do and this is launching in a month or whatever. Carrot tells all their female employees to say that. It was her idea. She's, uh, <laughs> she's now, being now, a team player. A- Anthony and Claire, you, you came at a pretty propitious moment because uh, speaking of marketing, Dan and I are marketing a whole new line of workout tapes. It's called the <laughs> Baby Kicky Dance. You guys got to get up there and do it. <laughs> One, two, three, and a one, two, three. I don't, I don't understand the. Well, first, you lift your award up to the sky. You raise it up with your right hand high. Then you go down to the left side, lift it up on the left side. Pass that. O- I, didn't hit, I, I can't. I don't think it's. Dan, I can't Dan, you're it. acting like you don't want to sell these workout tapes. <laughs> I can't. I couldn't. Hear, I couldn't hear you. I was being hilarious. I think you were saying bend over and pick something up off the floor and uh, exercise deal breaker. Because uh, uh, I'm gonna have another workout tape called uh, Learn How to Listen. I can't hear. I learn how to hear. I got my ears are dying, along with the rest of my body. How old are you guys? You guys dying? <laughs> Definitely. Can you feel it in your brain? We're are you all certain? technically dying. Are you? <laughs> to quote Duncan Trussell, God is a murderer. Uh, are, but are you, uh, are you starting to forget uh, actors' names? Like you're just trying to riff. You're like, ah, and then you take 10 minutes and go, Ray Don Chong. It's more that I'll see things online or like bands and like Saturday Night Live that are on Saturday Night Live. I'm like, I don't know who that is. And I don't, I don't so well, yeah, okay. That's those emotionally are, dying. Yeah, well, that's curmudgeonry. That's a, that's those are the beginning stages where you're just like, oh, I already did this. That was called in excess, and then you're like, 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 <laughs> or, or like, I don't, I don't, I'm not a, I already saw a Spider-Man movie for God's sakes. <laughs> but then you slowly, then you start to go like, I don't even know what I'm doing, and then you go to a Marvel movie and you're like, that was great, and they're like, you already saw that. You wrote part of it. <laughs> And I'm like, me and Stan Lee are just like, all right, great, Excelsior. Uh, I'm acting like, I, no, I'm just fine. I'm just, I, didn't. I really did. I, by the way, I really didn't, I, I really did not write. It, 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 people are tweeting me and going He's like. He's being you humble. T- he wrote the whole thing. Uh, there were parts that it felt like it was you. I know, but that's the thing. Like, if you, you could think that about anybody, and I just really, like, I'm a writer, and I don't, the, my worst nightmare would be those, the people that worked hard on that movie, the writers, the hearing that, they, like, I did not, I, there's, like, a couple words Tilda Swinton says when she's showing him the mirror dimension or something that I think accidentally got in there from, like, a bad version of a scene I wrote. Like, I didn't, I didn't, I, I just talked to them about, about portals and stuff for a little bit. But, well, uh, let me ask you this. Let me, and they had already say- shot, like, most of the movie when I talked to them about portals, so I'm not even saying I gave them the idea for portals. I, like I, I'm saying, like, I was just like, yeah, portals are neat. And they're like, yeah, they're like holes, they were, you, you were, but doors. And I was like, yeah, you, you got it. But, <laughs> so let me ask you this, because it's something that I'm sort of on the other side now for once because of this project. Like, the fact that you got to touch the Doctor Strange movie, you got to t- say things that, write things that Tilda Swinton said. Like, does that still make you oh, feel God. something inside? More than ever. I mean, especially the more, I think the longer you've worked. I, I guess maybe you get desensitized if you... If you if you wrote for I don't know like I don't know if you were like super duper I guess if you were Josh Wheaton and then somebody was like hey uh, Bob Denver from Gilligan's Island wants you to write a commercial for him and I guess maybe you would be less than starstruck no offense to a probably dead du- Bob Denver but I I just, I just I I I but 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 there's no way like at 43 it was like it was more like it was like uh, in those biopics when the when like the the shitty like uh, you know, like weird character that can't g- get a break or mm-hmm. that like spends his life like saying we should grow corn on the moon or something like 
and then, and then it's like a it was like a it was like a triumph it was great because it was like yeah no I don't even know how to yeah of course it was amazing yeah because the thought what, of it was I mean that's what this was to me the fact that I was able to sort of touch Rick and Morty be able to write in this voice and be able to write these comics to be able to name like an alien I'm like hey does this alien have a name no can we call it this sure like I got to name the alien yeah like something like that as somebody who like not just as like a person but a creative person because Dan, I started advertising did, but Dan did you did you approve that name. I, <laughs> Somebody did. Here's the thing. Like, like, that's really noteworthy. Like that, that stuff, all that stuff in that Rickstaverse, all of the stuff. And I assume that they generally are using you guys for all of the stuff that I'm always noticing. I'm going like, wait, some some person like just uh, they just made that up, but it kind of falls in line with with everything. Like it never violates the. It's not about violating the canon as much as it is violating the. <laughs> <laughs> Violate that cannon. <laughs> marketing, marketing. Uh, that cannon, Amamia. that cannon does the violating. Uh, it, it, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's violating the, the, the worry would be violating the tone, the, the, uh, the tonal IQ or something like that. Like, mm-hmm. oh, this isn't worthy of, you know, it's like, oh, this is a, like a hacky joke. Like someone's just connecting a dot because, oh, that guy's a uh, pencil vester, so of course they made pen Stephanie or something like that. Where you're just like, well, that's not the, no, just don't, don't do that. Yeah. Like, like, we keep to the code. What's that? We keep to the code. Yeah, like, and that's that's not easy when the code isn't just linear dot connection. You know, when it's not like, oh, now you play. Like, it's like collaboration. You guys like fill in with. You're just you're you're keeping with the actual like tone of the. Yeah, it's very impressive. That shouldn't be that shouldn't be overlooked. And obviously, some French people didn't overlook it. Cla- yeah. Claire and Anthony, it's Anthony, right? Yes. Uh, what's like? Can you give us like? Is there any like? Dirty underbelly of marketing, like kind of Mad Men stuff that goes on. Like, like what, what what goes on in marketing? Well, specifically for the Can Line, it's always a big deal because it's the international stage that there's just it sort of sh- people show their true colors. There's a woman out there called Cindy Gallup that you should follow because she's like I don't know what she's specifically done, but she's like the like badass woman in the advertising industry, and she's exposing people. So like with the Can Lines, there's a number of different awards. A lot of it because we won for the Entertainment Lines, which is pretty cool because it's all like entertainment. That's what everybody's all excited about but i mean everything billboards print ads email marketing they all have lions categories and especially like the print ads there's always there's like ways to get in it there's you know all you got to do is you got to run your ad one time in one random magazine in one random country in, in order for it to be approved and you can qualify for a line and then some of these things win because it's always like crazy provocative stuff and there was one for uh some headache brand it was for like their PM product, and I can't. I, I'm paraphrasing here, but essentially the concept was: give your wife this uh, drowsy making uh, headache product, and then you can have sex with her while she's passed out. Whoa, and they I gave think, that an award. I think I remember right? that. I think it was I a Jello pudding that. pops commercial. Right. right. <laughs> so. <laughs> So that guy, like, all these people that are looking like, oh, that's funny, check it off, check it off. And so it's one thing that they're, like, the judges aren't necessarily looking into, like, well, is this real? Where did this run? Is this, was this actually approved? It's just those be like, <laughs> and then they're right off. So not only is it offensive that one, this fake thing won an award, but it's also, in a way, it's offensive that these guys just sort of looked at the, the, uh, the creative concept, which was rape, and they're like, <laughs> yep, and then just checked it off. So, I mean... And what Cindy's doing and, like, just pointing people out, putting everybody to task, putting me to task, any male in advertising to task, as we rightfully should be, especially now, is just like, hey, this is kind of fucked up that we think this is funny. So there's things like that. And just there was another one that was like a fake app. It was, this, it was in this, one of the same categories that the Rixifers was also uh, up for, which we didn't win. But this fake app won because it was, it was pulling uh, cached images of Google Earth. In like the Mediterranean Sea, it's like, oh, you can spot refugees, and if, if you spot one, press this button, and we'll let somebody know about it. But it was fake. Like it didn't work. They launched it like a week before the ads actually went up, and the actual app didn't even work. Sad. What yeah. were they? What was it? Was it? Was it Levi's or what was the? <laughs> I think it was actually a charity. Oh, so it was is, actually just a. It was. It wasn't even like a. Oh, this was a a a a, 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 a well intended but ill ill conceived. Uh, uh, like ad for for a Snickers bar. Like, 
I don't think they put their name on that. It was just like con artistry. I, I, yeah. I mean, it's well. I, yeah. I've always felt like I'm not. I'm not qualified to actually say this, but I've always always had the suspicion (laughs) until we went to white nationalism with this last election. Like, I always had the suspicion that that we had our thing going on over here. That we were like the Las Vegas of Earth. That we got this open book. (laughs) That we we are dwelling among the uh, the legacy of the promises we made and dealing with the fallout with our free press and our and and you know having invented television and then inventing the culture that was based on it having di- diverted from monarchy and any pre-existing class system into a pure like crazy ass well-intended but totally fucking like uh, out of control capitalistic class system that 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 we were over here kind of like working all this shit out and then everybody in Europe is like like holding their pinky out when they drink their tea and going like yeah well pff, fuck those guys so racist so sexist so out of control so stupid such gun nuts all this stuff but that then every once in a while on Facebook you see this thing that's like look at this detergent ad that <laughs> This country just did, and it's like a woman puts a Chinese guy in a washing machine, and because she uses their detergent, he comes out as a big black guy and fucks her brains out. Yep. And that won an award. It won that same, not the exact same award, but they have a very similar statue. And it's kind of like, 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 and then you, and then you saw, I also saw, because I clicked on that a thing, and I was like, oh, wait, and it was also a derivation of a different version of the same ad, where it was also kind of like slight racial components compared to like how color is good protect your color anyways like i it's like like i think i think a lot of shit over there is like in the catacombs and like 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 not bubbled up yet like like that they're not ready at all and now now i'm just in a full-blown panic because it's like i thought my my consolation was always that we were we were the clumsy nutcases that we came over here like to this weird like witch burning colony where we were like let's work that out and then we were like and then we're like, oh, the people in Africa look different. Let's work that out. And it's like, oh, let's build it. It's like everything we ever did was just like foot in mouth, head up ass, like like burning both g- the candles of being a jackass at both ends. And like while everyone watched and was like, we know how to do it better because we still have a, 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 a crown in a case somewhere in a museum. <laughs> and, and, but now I'm just now I'm just fucking terrified. Because, because obviously we went. That wasn't the story. That's not what was happening. We were we 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 we, we for two hundred years. All we did was just rebuild our own little ad hoc kind of fucking like like little like fucking shitty little. Well, potato congratulations field of, on the award. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as frivolous as all this. That, that, that was the weirdest had... acceptance speech I've ever heard. <laughs> He if never you were, thanked you. If you were hired to sell America, but your demographic was uh, not Trump supporters, he figured out how to sell America to you know a certain kind of customer, and it turned out that was the strategy that, that worked with the electoral system and blah blah blah. If you were, if your job was just to sell our country post election, like you know, how like uh, Chipotle probably had somebody come in another quality, and say, like, okay, uh, and that guy said, you need to focus on. <laughs> On, on sal- uh, n- salsa, yeah. Uh, what, 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 yeah. Any ideas? Not to put you on the spot. Like, where would you start? You'd like you got to. Uh... <laughs> so who who are we selling America to? We're selling it. So let's say Martians. Like I don't know. Like like but but they can distinguish between countries. They're going like we're gonna we're gonna destroy Earth, but we're gonna leave one country left. Let's try that. Like 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 uh, they're, they're like. Show me what you got. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> The Martians, the Martians are going. There's 250 countries. All right, you guys, you guys fucked up. Like Mars is like we have. I guess we have less oceans because we just started speaking Martian, and so like we. You guys need to clean this. The sake. So so your your job. America sent you as the marketing guy to the upfronts. <laughs> so the first thing. Um, we're probably in, in competition with, let's say, the bigger countries. Nothing against, like, all these, like, nothing against Denmark nothing and everything against like that. Malta. Like, square, yeah. They're not going to offer anything to Mars. It's going to be us, China, and Russia. What do we got? Uh, we got some pretty kick-ass mountain. It also depends on what they're going to be using America for. Like, we've got some pretty, we've got some halfway decent infrastructure. Like, the internet sucks balls. But other than that, like, we've got some pretty Show solid, me like, what you got. Highways. <laughs> some pretty solid highways. All right. Um, <laughs> pretty solid. We also yeah. have to. 
that's how I would have I would have started with I would have started with jazz and rock and roll and shit like that. <laughs> well, that's the other thing is we have to know before we can sell America, we got to know about the Martians. What are they looking for? Are they right. looking for like pure natural resources? Well, they I found was, a shitload of oil in Texas this weekend. Did you hear about that? Uh, d- uh, d- Did you hear about that? They shouldn't. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe they didn't start looking for it there. That's where I go for all my oil. They're probably post oil at this point. Uh, uh, I but, well, no, I did think. Yeah, you're right. I didn't specify, but I think it's interesting that you that was a ta- attack that I didn't even think about. That first of all, you you're very practical the entire time. The first thing you did is sweep 273 nations <laughs> off the table. It's so like this is my country too. You know, I got to... Right. And then, and then, and yeah. then you. St- yeah. he, 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 I had a lot of cheese burgers. You guys can see. He that. sank Denmark right off the bat, and it's told great, everybody but-, but China and Russia to go fuck themselves. That's very smart. Now it's a three-person race. Right. This is my 2020 bid starting right now. Uh, cl- 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 Claire, think, well, how, a- Claire, how would you go about pitching America under a Trump presidency to to a, a, an alien race? Oh, Jesus. Well, can well, I first... I'll well. give you time to think while I refine, because I think that's a good question to ask me. And my, it's like, the, Martian, the Martians... No, no, no. I mean, his question to me about refining the question. Okay. I'm not hijacking your question. Sure. You guys love to watch me be a bad person, and you just like... You're like, he's being a bad person. It's like you're projecting it a little bit. I'm it's a bad Hermantown. host, but I'm not a bad person. Uh, I'm just saying, like, I'm, I'm, I'm helping her by saying, like, okay, here's what the Martians, I'll, I'll, I'll answer that. Here's what the Martians are looking for. The Martians are looking for, uh, uh, they want to, they want Earth to, um, uh, they want it to, uh, they, want it, they want to plug and play. They want to, like, walk away from it. They want to, they're going to use their bombs or whatever, Martian rays to wipe out all but one country, thinking that that country will then be the only country on this place called Earth. And their goal is they're looking for the country that represents the best of what the human species has to offer intergalactically. There, take it. Okay. Um, so I would definitely take them to in and out first. Oh, uh, there you go. Yeah, take them out to a nice lunch. Show them, yep. a, show them a burger. Exactly. There you are. Um... I, I mean, <laughs> if we're looking at, like, if they want to keep say Earth is going to be, like, this sort of zoo. Not zoo. That's going to be awful. That's going to be an awful way to get into it. But No, it's not going to be a zoo. It's going to have to, it's going to, have to trade with them. I mean, sorry, they're looking for a collaborator. Otherwise, they just blow us up and put, like, a, they put a Martian in and out there. But, they, 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 <laughs> but they, 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 they're saying, like, well, ugh, you guys are, ugh, you're, 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 uh, you're blocked. You're arguing with each other. You can't agree. You've got some people thinking that you should put a tarp on, your, on the female half, and you've got other people thinking that, Cars are more important than bullets, and bullets are more important than feet. Like, like, we, you can't figure out your value system. You don't have any kind of. You need to get into the Star Trek mode of like each planet has a gimmick. Each gimmick is like we like war, we like logic, we like the color green. Like, mm-hmm. like all we're hearing when we listen to Earth is a bunch of static. We're looking for the country that's gonna like, you know, next to, we're gonna we're gonna blow everybody else up. Let the one country repopulate so it's like their language, their culture, their you know their history will become you know their their curation of the previous history before everyone got blown up, like all of that shit. The next time we come back around, those people, that country will be the planet, and so who's it going to be? Why should it be America? I think it's because we have the raw tools to do it. If you look at America compared to everybody else, and I know considering this election was won because of a like. From the help of a white nationalist movement, I think of what sets America great is our capacity for diversity. That we can like <laughs> point at I know. But we can point we can Anthony, point at if, yes. If the if the aliens were going to have like dinner party meetings with every nation, who would you invite? What Americans would you be like, Oh, I'm gonna have these celebrities and we're gonna serve this and the music's going to be this. You know what you do? You, you just have the this aliens. This is when I would punt to my producer. You, 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 for, if, if you're me, uh, you, you just say, aliens, we're going we're gonna to sit down. We're all going to go to Dan Tana's, and, and you're going to meet, meet Aerosmith. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just going to tell you some fucking awesome rock and roll stories. And then you, just, they, they, then they, you get them real high, and then you, you steal their resources. <laughs> Well, I guess if it's just like a face-to-face meeting, I would probably hire more character actors than anything. Who's the uh, the guy with the big mustache from Big Little Dennis Farina. <laughs> Sam Elliott. Oh. Sam Elliott? Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> I wonder. What, I wonder what a commercial by Sam Elliott oh. for Earth would sound like. <laughs> I'm Sam Elliott for Earth. <laughs> it's not what's for dinner. We're not a steak. We're a planet. But America is the the potatoes on that plate because marketing research has proved that you eat the potato first. And then Sam Elliott just stabs everybody. I would say to them, I guess, given my uh, criteria, I would say... But, but you would do it as Rosie Perez. Right. No, I wouldn't. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Uh, I would say to them, uh, uh, like, well, look, we've been trying to do what you're talking about for a long time, like blowing everybody else up and taking their place. <laughs> so, like, we might not be the best candidate for the job, but at least we know what you're talking about when you put, when you pitch it. You, you you pick China, you might come back and they're just like, we love being China, and like half the planet's just sitting there. <laughs> Fucking go go with America, man. Hello, I'm Sam Elliott for America. Our Chinese food is better than China. <laughs> they eat any fucking thing over there. <laughs> we we called it down to the good stuff. And then he stabs everybody. There's only one country on the planet Earth that has murder vans, and it ain't America. <laughs> uh, also, oh shit, look, it's Aerosmith. <laughs> We're the only country that has Aerosmith, so fuck everybody else. All right. I think we should thank our marketing people from Carrot. Uh, we'll keep the award. Thank you. Thank you. Carrot Creative, everybody. Claire and Anthony. Now, Steve, is that why you came out to, to, bring, to bring the Carrot people out? I didn't, I didn't know how to get them out, but I was happy to be a part of this uh, Steve, you're staying. Exercise uh, uh, conversation. Can you just stay up here? Because like, you, you're you're like you're like a little sleepy hoodie gnome right now. <laughs> yeah. You, he, Harmon you, works Steve so hard because Steve oh, uh, oh my God. that he's constantly sleeping. <laughs> because Steve's job is to make it easier for me to do more things. Steve, Steve Jesus, you guys. Steve. Steve's job. Uh, <laughs> our, our, our crowd, our crowd's funnier than we are right now. Have you? I, d- I disagree with him completely. <laughs> Based on that, like I would, I would have agreed with him five minutes ago. That Steve's job thing. You, you, you should be able to let that over the plate. Have you? You shouldn't guys... get that excited about 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 sounds. <laughs> Sorry. Have you guys? Have you guys been doing any role playing? Uh, no, not no, not since Harmon Quest yesterday, but uh, on the show on Harmon Town, no, we yeah, have not yeah. done like any shadow runs or any uh, no nope. Pathfinder in a long time. Oh, sorry. Do you want to take since you're replacing Spencer? Do you want to you want to do a little DM for a second? You want you want to be our okay. dungeon master? <laughs> I mean, Aaron, sure. I, I, I know that you try to shy away from game playing. I, uh, <laughs> I will say to be passed out with a mustache on an ottoman. <laughs> that Lion Award, just the trophy. I'm not talking about the honor of receiving it. Just talking about the trophy itself. It's uh, it it it, it it's not able to sit on anything. It, it's a, it, it it says to you, hang me on a wall or go fuck yourself. <laughs> now that's good marketing. <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah. Does it? It bounces on the paws. Oh, it bounces on the paws! <laughs> Dan, I'm so happy I was here for that breakthrough. Uh, I just love that the, fi- the answer also is, like, cute. That it's, like, yeah. it's a lion, but then, like, I don't know. It's, like, it's little paws. That's good. Now, now do, do, do you, Dan, or do you, Aaron, want to decide what kind of realm we're in, what kind of game we're playing? So Sharpie Quirk throwback? Sharpie Quirk throwback. All right. Okay, so Steve, will, Steve will enter at some point. All right. All right. Uh, we now take you to uh, the, uh, the, old, uh, the, the old school of early days D&D slash Pathfinder. All right. Find yourself. 
Sharpie and Quark. We, we did it. We found ourselves. We found ourselves. <laughs> or is there a last week or is it like a seven? This is when, when Spencer would say what happened. Do you want to do, to do a wrap up? Previously on Harmontown, Sharpie and Quark fought two giant hydras wearing hats. The hats contain puzzles, and it took them a long time to complete the puzzles, but they successfully completed those puzzles, and now they have found themselves in the shoot a realm. They, after walking down an incorrect door, they have now found themselves in a, in a, in a wet room, surrounded by small objects. This I, is Harmontown, or what, what did Spencer say this week on Heart? What is the... Well, he would... Well, what would he do? He last, would say, sometimes you'd say, last time on Harmontime. Yeah. Oh, yeah, last time on Harmontime. But will they find themselves out of the wet room containing small figurines? Each figurine detailed and odd. What secrets did the figurines contain? Who owned them previously? Well, you're kind of what going, are they you, worth? You're kind of going from recap to wrap up, which <laughs> like, wait, wait. it sounds like it sounds like we just had an adventure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. That, and, now, and now you're gonna say you wait. learned it from sleeping with me. Because <laughs> uh, uh, okay. I always start sex by telling them how I had sex with them last time. Yeah, and just apologizing. Yeah. Um, but will you now? <laughs> and then I go to sleep. How, how many apologies constitute a f- relationship? Okay. Yes. Um, You're in a you wet find, realm okay, with so we're small in the wet figurines. Room. We're in the wet room. Okay, you find yourselves in a wet room surrounded by figurines. All right, Sharpie, um, I, I have detect my magic, so I, I detect magic on the figurines. You do that. <laughs> You see, there are two figurines on the far right side of the square room that are shaped like clowns, and you detect magic on them. All right, uh, I, I, I do, uh, do I do, detect good, e- good magic or evil magic on these? Let me roll. Uh, you don't know. You just know there's magic. All right, I, I, I take one of the figurine clowns in my hand and I toss the other one to Sharpie. That happens. All right. Uh, I, I walk toward him and I hold the, we, I, I hold my clown figurine towards his clown figurine and we make them like kiss. When you making them kiss, you see their eyes glow red and you smell something that smells like burning rubber and you hear a cackling. <laughs> SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> to your right, you see SpongeBob SquarePants, licensed character from the Cartoon Network. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> Is that a reference to SpongeBob? Yeah, he's he's nailing SpongeBob right now. Wait, it's uh, it's Sharpie's turn. Uh, I uh, appro- approach this uh, young knave and say, "Prithy." Uh, Gramercy's uh, Renfair talk. Uh, we are two explorers that uh, have, have lost our way. Are you native to this realm? No. <laughs> then, Looking then, at SpongeBob, you see that he's wearing tatter clothing. His shorts are not ha- as you would expect them to be. It seems like he's been some, through some sort of war or siege. <laughs> Oh, God. Can you imagine how long it would take to waterboard Spongebob? <laughs> you poor, you poor thing. But we're bringing it back. We're bringing it back. Because a lot of these guys, I'm sure they did something wrong anyway. Fucking uh, I, I, fuck I, I say to Spongebob, <clears throat> I say to Spongebob, um, we, 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 we heard your cackling. Are you friend or foe? Friend, I I sense his equivocation and I pull out my uh, my uh, my my emerald dagger. All right, let me Woo! let me roll that. But 
I don't use you it. I, 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 oh. I just pull He's it just out. Drawing like it. It. Okay, I, say, I say, whoa, man. I mean, somebody can be not sure they're your friend and still be a good person. Right. Yeah. I, I'm using I'm using bluff right now. Oh. Yeah. Uh, did I kind of blow that for you? No. Um. Yeah. I, I think I think the icing's off that cupcake now. Yeah. I'm, well, you always do uh, fuck things up because you're too soft. Fuck this guy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> Right, As you right. say, fuck this guy. All of the figurines in the room, including clowns and children kissing, and because precious moments figurines and angels and small lions and birds and a butterfly, all of their eyes glow red and the lasers from their eyes meet in the middle of the room into a pyramid and you hear it <laughs> buzzing. Uh, guys... We've got company. company. <laughs> I cast Mystic Smoke Bomb. <laughs> All right, hold on a second. Because uh, we, what you don't know is that like Dan and I have have, have, have anti smoke bomb goggles that uh, that we can see through the smoke, but nobody else can, unless they have a will save of of uh, yeah like twenty two yeah. <laughs> That happens. <laughs> All Casting right. smoke bomb. The smoke fills the room. SpongeBob is disoriented for a second, but Whoa. when you're go- <laughs> he, you should get, he should get experience points for also doing the face, as far as I know, because I've never heard the cartoon, but I know that I know SpongeBob no. when I see him. He's, he, he's really nailing. He's it. transformed. Yeah. <laughs> Using your smoke goggles, you see uh, on the far side of the room a hatch door with an intricate lock. Sharpie, you have... You have uh... I cast intricate key. <laughs> All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Waving my hands in a magical manner. That works! Using intricate key, the hatch unlocks, revealing a tunnel that is lit with green light. I dive through the tunnel. Diving through the tunnel, you feel your clothing changing. Uncanny dodge imitation. He okay. Be- he becomes a, po- a Pontiac. <laughs> <laughs> the dads of the world rejoice. <laughs> I, 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 I I open up the driver door and get inside Sharpie. <laughs> <laughs> getting getting inside your friend. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're, so you're okay. Yes, getting inside your friend, you examine the inner workings of his. I, I, I put I, I put the Pontiac Sharpie into drive, and I hit the gas pedal through the tunnel. Through the tunnel, you feel your clothing change. Your your clothes. What was Sharpie before? Uh, A person. <laughs> uh, him, him. You mean right? Cork. Quirk. Quirk, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, Quirk, you feel yourself, your clothing ch- changes into a red leather jumpsuit. Your shoes become beautiful black shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I start singing a Prince song. <laughs> Purple droplets drop down from the top of the tunnel. Beautiful As you get black the tunnel, shoes. You find yourself in a darkly lit living room, all of the furniture upholstered with leopard, and in the corner is a man, a quiet man, small of stature, but great of sexuality. Dudley Moore? Hello. (laughs) Uh, Well, I'm still a car, so I just say, vroom, vroom? (laughs) You, you don't have to be a car anymore if you want to go back into not. Sharpie, sure, you're in this room. You you're no to... longer a car. Uh, what is, did he get out before I turned into a person? <laughs> oh shit! I'm, 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 I'm... Ah! 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 I can't breathe. My gallbladder! Oh, 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 I can't breathe. Oh. You are both scarred for life by this process. I I I I, might... I I use my emerald dagger to carve my way out of his body. Oh, Jesus. It's fine. Anything but this. 
I, his, I, I, his feet are on my appendix. I, I plop out and I use uh, my, my my green potion of healing to heal up the wound that I left. That happens. And is effective. Oh. Oh, hey. <laughs> Who are you people? <laughs> we you... were about to ask you <laughs> that very question. <laughs> you look at him and recognize him as an androgynous superstar sexuality sex it is the you realize that you are in the afterlife and this is in fact the posthumous prince but not that prince the prince of the scargaloo realm whose laws restricted people for years and years you have a lot of beef against this person but you know that he is he's a dangerous prince but he models himself after Prince. The artist. The artist. Formally. And you, then. Uh, uh, <clears throat> did you ask us a moment ago who we are? I did. Ask, uh, ask it again. Who are you people? The two guys about to kick your f- shit. <laughs> what the- and I link hands with, with Sharpie. And we do like a, that weird like thumb thing where you kind of caress thumbs, and magical energy emanates because of our spell of friendship. Friendship. You notice movement in Prince's pants. <laughs> well, I'm gonna hit you with my magical dick. <laughs> Prince pr- produces a fermented elephant's dick in a jar. It is disgusting, but also uh, m- majestic. I, 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 u- I use it. I, I go to hi- I hit them um, with how, it. I'm sorry. How are you using this? Are you gonna like sl- like be, I, be, I, be really specific? Yeah, I need okay, to. Okay. Pr- I need to roll for it's, a specific thing. It's like it's cut off from the body, right? So it's just like something I can hold. You I can got hold a like magic, a mallet. You got a magical yeah. pickled elephant's dick in a jar. It's like a it's like a curio. Well, I I un. I unscrew the jar, I take the giant dick out, Jesus. I hold it like a mallet. Steve. What? No, I'm just I'm joking, I'm joking. Sorry. And then I, I I charge at Sharpie No, I char- I charge at where their hands meet and try to destroy the link. Okay, Ooh. all right. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me hear all that. All right, charging at Sharpie and Quirk's meeting. I've never seen this side of you. <laughs> Sharpie Takes twelve damage. Oh! Quark, Quark uses dodge, and he takes no damage. I, I tumble away, and I pull out. Uh, I still have my emerald dagger in my hand, which I, I, I believe has now a keen uh, like uh, edge to it, uh, with dealing more damage. And I, as I roll, I roll, and I try to slice him in the leg. <laughs> Rolling in slow motion like the Matrix, <laughs> Quark slices his leg. Well, hold on, wait. <laughs> <laughs> For our listeners, she's just pantomiming dice right now. Does anybody here have? Does anybody here have dice in them? You do? Yes. Get them up here. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'll take. I'll take those dice, baby. At least, at least, really one, at least a D twenty. Let me have those dice. Why are you just sitting there? Where? Oh, here they come. <laughs> I, I asked that question. In. Pretty certain that someone was going to have these dice. <laughs> the, this oh, is, he, is he going to his car? What's happening? <laughs> all right, c- continue. Aaron. Okay. Uh, okay. Roll. All right. Uh, okay. You. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here they are. Oh, thank you. In a small black velvet pouch. Yes. A man comes up from the audience, producing a small velveteen pouch. Okay. You find dice in them. Okay, so so you you try to slice at the ankle. I, I, I aim for the for his leg to try to cut him with my dagger. Okay. With a keen edge. Okay, you do not slice his leg, but you braise it, showing that you are business. I braise it. <laughs> yeah, you you you. I, I, like meaning like in a welding fashion, or I, I make like a nice roast out of it. <laughs> the. <laughs> I, Wait, he, this, this guy's got more to be outdone. <laughs> and lest you think nerds don't have their own hierarchy. 
I, an alpha nerd <laughs> with yeah, a, a, these, a, these. A, a tense ponytail or full on man bun just came up <laughs> with a much larger, I, I, equally I, black velvet sack <laughs> bulging with millions of dice. I'm, I, it couldn't be more or less being, phallic. Yeah, I'm being in, in, presented with sacks of increasing size. Okay. Oh, There's a, nice. the, the, okay, fine. Okay. 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 So I, I, I lightly braise him. I lightly braise his leg and I put a little shallot on there, a, a little white pepper, a little olive oil. That happens. And, and, and yeah, and I, I, and I, I, I cast uh, preheat to 350. <laughs> All right. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, that it, it, there's like a slight heat, but it doesn't do anything. Ah, shit! It was a critical fail. <laughs> I'm just waiting now for like a Dune pilot to float up and put a giant asthma inhaler on the table. Suddenly, the floor turns into f- bandanas. Thousands and thousands of bandanas. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! My kryptonite. <laughs> you all fall, you feel yourselves, all three of you feel yourselves falling through the realm of bandanas and into a new room that resembles a pumpkin. Do we uh, do, uh, the inside of a pumpkin? Like we're inside a giant pumpkin? I mean, how could a room resemble the outside of a <laughs> How, while well, inside a pumpkin, would you know it was a pumpkin? Ooh. <laughs> this is a, you really are nailing Spencer. <laughs> okay. uh, you you, um, you, you Spencer. fall through you fall through the bandanas and and Prince has disappeared. It's just the two of you. Okay. No, 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 you no, don't no, know no, where th- he's gone. That was a close th- call. We almost got beaten up by the Prince of Scraggledore. Uh, I I I take the pumpkin seeds and I. I get some ar- like artisanal sea salt, <laughs> and I, I I I put them on a cookie sheet, and I and I, I bake the, the the pumpkin seeds. Um, I'm in Spencer character right now. There are no pumpkin seeds. Oh, it has been carved out, and you start to hear a faint singing. I examine my. <laughs> I listen. <laughs> <laughs> You are my fire, <laughs> the one desire. Cliffhanger! <laughs> Steve Levy, Jeff Davis. Steve Levy. Aaron McGaffey, give her a hand. Lucas. Thank you, Lucas. Our carrot friends, our marketing carrot friends. Uh, 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 <laughs> Our, and Claire. Our, 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 our dice wielders. Thank you so much, everybody. That's been Hammond Town. I'm our, Jeff uh, the, Davis. The, the, the black guy that had to sit behind the tall guy. The black guy that's sat behind the tall white guy. If that's not a metaphor for the current state of America, yeah. we're all the black guy sitting behind a tall guy now. <laughs> I'm Jeff Davis, I should marry Dan Harmon. Drive fast, take chances. You get any of that? It's a good show. 